Hello everyone, my name is Mingyuan. Today I will be talking about black box use of one-way functions is useless for optimal fair coin tossing. This is a drawing work with my advisor, Hamata Maji. So in this work, we will be focusing on a two-party fair coin tossing protocol. So this is an inputless protocol where the Alice and Bob exchange R messages. At, an, at the end of the protocol, both parties will agree on an output, which is either zero or one. The fairness requires that even if one party aborts during the execution of the protocol, the other party should still output a bit. Consequently, every party will maintain a defense coin, which will be their output if the other party aborts. Insecurity of this protocol is defined as how much an adversary can alter the expected output of the other party. So let me first tell you about our contribution by positioning it among prior works. Firstly, in the information theoretic setting, we know that any protocol, for any protocol, its insecurity is at least a constant. However, if you are willing to assume the existence of one-way functions, by a, sequence by a sequence of work in the 1980s, we now have an explicit protocol that achieves one over square root of R insecurity. Recall that R is the number of message exchanged in the protocol. If you are willing to assume a stronger assumption that oblivious transfer exists, we have an explicit account Oh, we also have an explicit protocol that achieves 1 over r insecurity. So note that 1 over r is smaller than 1 over square root of r. And Cleave shows that 1 over r insecurity is unavoidable by showing that any r message protocol is at least 1 over r insecure. So given this result, it is very natural to ask that, can we construct optimal point coin optimal coin tossing, fair coin tossing protocols based on one-way functions alone. In this work, we partially answer this question by showing that any black box construction of optimal fair coin tossing protocol from one-way function is at least the one over square root of R insecure. That is, one-way function cannot help to achieve one function not only cannot help to achieve 1 over r insecurity, it also cannot help achieve any insecurity lower than 1 over square root of r. For example, it cannot achieve 1 over r to the 3 fourths insecurity. So after three decades, we have now shown that the protocols from the 1980s are actually achieve, achieves the optimal insecurity. We prove this result by extending the potential-based argument introduced by recent works. I want to stress that the hardness of computation result for fair coin tossing protocols extend naturally to all multi-party randomized functionalities as long as the honest players are not in the majority. So now, let me formulate this problem in more details. We consider a fair coin tossing protocol where parties exchange a total of R messages. And in this talk, we will not be restricted to protocols whose output is uniform. So we will use X to denote the expected output of the protocol. And we refer to such protocols as bias X protocol. As I said, Alice will maintain the defense coin which will be her output if Bob aborts. Note that she might constantly update her defense whenever she prepares a new message. And similarly, Bob will set up his defense. And also, we will make one simplification that we shall only consider fair stop adversaries. So that is, the adversary follows the protocol honestly, but may abort prematurely. This, we make, this simplification can be justified by the following two reasons. Firstly, this weak adversary is actually already powerful enough to do the most devastating attack. 
Secondly, by using private key crypto cryptographic primitives, we can ensure honest behavior. So Cleve showed that for any R message fair coin tossing protocols, there exists a computationally efficient fair stop adversary that altered the expected output by one by R. Hence, every R message protocol is at least one of R insecure, no matter what computational assumption you assume. Therefore, we call an R message coin tossing protocol an optimal fair coin tossing protocol if it is one over R insecure. Now let's look at what are the known constructions that we have. First, if you assume the existence of one-way functions, we have this protocol called majority protocol. In this protocol, Alice will sample private randomness AI, Bob will sample private randomness BI. In the first round, Alice commits all her private bits A1, A2 up to AR to Bob. And then alternatively, Bob and Alice will review one bit at a time. At the end of the protocol, the output is the majority of A1 XOR B1, A2 XOR B2, and so on. So it is known that this majority protocol is 1 over square root of R insecure. On the other hand, if you are willing to assume the existence of oblivious transfer in a beautiful work, Moran, Nao, and Sakiv constructed the optimal fair coin tossing protocol. That is, the MNS protocol is 1 over R insecure. So to summarize, on one hand, you have this MNS, MNS protocol, which assumes that oblivious transfer exists and achieves the optimal insecurity. On the other hand, you have the majority protocol, which have a higher insecurity, but assumes a weaker assumption that one-way function exists. So in theoretical cryptography, a guiding principle is to build primitives using the minimum or the weakest, weakest, weakest hardness of computational assumptions. And if such constructions do not exist, we want to understand what are the inherent hard hurdles. So the question we are asking here is that, can we construct optimal fair coin tossing protocol from one way function, or can we prove that it is inherently impossible? Unfortunately, one cannot prove the negative result unconditionally. One of the prominent way of studying such questions is through the lens of black box construction introduced by Impact Diazo and Rudish. On a high level, a construction is a fully black box if the construction and the security reduction treat the primitive and the adversary in a black box manner. That is, they only care about the input and output behavior of the primitive and the adversary. In light of this, Impagliato proposed her, his well-known five words. In a mini-crypt world, we have all the primitives that can be black box constructed from one-way function. In the cryptomania world, we have primitives like key agreement protocol, public key encryption, and oblivious transfer. All, cannot, all of them cannot be black box constructed from one-way function. So actually, many of the primitives inside Minicrypt were not known to be construct were not known to be able to black box constructed from one function for a very long time. So for the case of optimal fair and coin tossing protocol, is it still the case that there is a mysterious construction that we have not found out yet? Or is there a reason why black box construction does not exist? So whether optimal fair coin tossing belongs to Minicrypt or Cryptomania remains to be one of the major open problems in this field. So in this work, we resolve this problem in the negative, as we prove that <clears throat> for every black box construction of an R message bias X fair coin tossing protocol from one function is at least 
x times one, one minus x over square root of r insecure. <coughs> so the implication of this theorem is that first, the black box use of one way function cannot yield optimal fair coin tossing protocols. Secondly, the majority protocol is actually qualitatively the most secure protocol that one can build using one way function in a black box manner. So following the paradigm proposed by Impact Liazzo and Rudish, we consider the coin tossing protocol in the random oracle model. So in this model, Alice and Bob, besides talk, just talking to each other, they also have black box access to a random oracle, which is just a function that takes a lambda bit input, lambda bit string as input, and output a lambda bit string, where lambda is the security parameter. So in this work, Alice and Bob are computationally unbounded. In an honest execution, Alice and Bob ask polynomially many queries. An adversary, however, may ask additional queries to the random oracle. Intuitively, this models the usefulness of black box access to an idealized one-way function because random oracle is hard to invert even given unbounded computational ability. So our objective is to prove that there exists a fair stop strategy that asks polynomially many additional queries and altered expected output by one over square root of R. Let me tell you what are the parallel works in this setting. In a work by Dahman Sold, Lindau, Mahamudi, and Malkin, they show that if the message complexity is <coughs> if the <coughs> if the message complexity is small, then a fail stop adversary can alter the expected output by one over square root of r. In another work, Dahman Sold, Mohammadi, and Malkin prove that if the protocol satisfy a special property that they call function oblivious, then a fail stop adversary can alter the expected output by strict, strictly more than one over r. So intuitively, function oblivious requires that the output of the protocol depends solely on the private randomness of each party, but is independent of the instantiation of the random oracle. So all the known protocols, for example, like the majority protocol, are function oblivious. In comparison to this two work, our results resolve this problem in the full generality. We impose no restriction on the message complexity or the type of protocols. And our attacker asks only polynomially many additional queries. The insecurity it achieves actually matches the positive result. <coughs> and our results works for bias X protocols where this x can be an arbitrary number. In particular, x may depend on the security parameter. In another uh, relevant work, Hetner, Makrayanis, and Omri proved that there exists a universal constant c such that for any constant r, the existence of r message fairy coin tossing protocol with insecurity less than c over square root of r implies the existence of key agreement protocols. This work is incomparable to our work as it proves a stronger consequence, but for, restri but for restricted class of protocols. So now let me tell you a bit about our technical proof. So recall that we have an R message bias X fair coin tossing protocol in the random oracle model. Our objective is to find a fair stop adversary that asks polynomially many additional queries and alter the expected output by one by square root of R. The first issue in the random oracle model is that condition on the pub public transcript, Alice and Bob's private view are correlated due to the common 
private queries they ask to the random oracle. So our first step is to make Alice and Bob's private view independent. This can be done by a tool called Heavy Query. So Heavy Query is introduced by Brock and Mohammadi, and it's a standard techniques for removing correlations between Alice and Bob's private view in the random oracle model. So Heavy Query has the following properties. First, it's a public algorithm, meaning that it can be performed by either Alice or Bob. It takes the partial transcript as input and outputs a number of query and answer pairs. Heavy query guarantees that condition on the partial transcript and the heavy query's message, Alice and Bob's private view are close to being independent. And the heavy query asks polynomially many additional queries. So we shall use the heavy query in the following way. Immediately after every protocol message, we will invoke the heavy query and attach its message to the protocol's message. So for example, when Alice prepare her first message, she will, after she prepare her first message, she will invoke the heavy query and attach that message to her first message. Now this become the first message in the augmented protocol. So note that this does not change the message complexity of the protocol. So in the augmented protocol, for any partial transcript V, we shall define the following quantities. First, let PV denote the probability that V at the partial transcript V happens. Secondly, we use XV to stand for the expected output condition on this partial transcript V. Lastly, we use AV and BV to denote the expectation of Alice and Bob's defense coin condition on this partial transcript. So given these definitions, we are interested in finding a stopping time tau and the following score. So a stopping time is just a prefix free collection of partial transcript. So let's take a closer look at our score function. So the term AV minus XV is the change in Alice's, Alice's expected output if Bob aborts at V. So this is because if Bob does not abort at V in an honest ex execution, the output of the protocol will have expectation XV by definition. However, if Bob does abort at node V, the output of the protocol will be Alice's defense which has an expectation AV. So Bob, by aborting at node V, it results in a change in Alice's expected output, the difference between AV and XV. Analogously, if Alice aborts at node V, it results in a change in Bob's expected output, the difference between Bob's defense and the expected output. So overall, when this node V is drawn according to this stopping time, this score reflects the change in the expected output when parties abort at this stopping time. Now we shall prove that the, the maximum score yielded by the maximum stopping time is large. So follow the recent, following the recent work, we shall use an inductive approach to prove that this maximum score is higher than c times x times one minus x over square root of r, where c is a universal constant. So let's use this figure as an example. So let's suppose phi is the beginning of the protocol where the first message has k possibilities. So the first message can either be one, two, or k. Now, to pick our stopping time, we need to make an independent decision for every node. For example, at node one, we need to decide whether we pick node one as our stopping, stopping time, or we defer the attack to the remaining r minus one subprotocol. And we need to make the same decision for node two, node three, and so on. 
So by the definition of our, of our score function, if we pick node one as our stopping time, this yields a score of a1 minus x1 plus b1 minus x1. On the other hand, if we defer the, the attack to this remaining sub-vertical sub by our inductive hypothesis, this is guaranteed to be higher than c times x1 times 1 minus x1 over square root of r minus 1. Recall that x1 is the expected output of this sub-vertical. So the highest score will pick, decide on whether to pick node 1 as stopping time or pick tau 1 as the stopping time based on which quantity is larger. So the maximum score will at least be higher than the maximum of these two quantity. And the same argument hold for node 2, node 3, and so on. So overall, the maximum score is guaranteed to be higher than the average of the maximum of these two quantity, which can be written in this way. So now we have now need to, we just need to prove that the expectation of the maximum of these two quantities is higher than our goal. So in a work by Horiskani, Maji, and Wang, they identify the following potential function, phi x, a, and b defined as this. So the intuition behind this potential function is the following. So x times one minus x is the quality of the attack attributed to the bias of the protocol. And the x minus a terms punishes as Alice if her defense is too far away, which is if her defense, which is A, is too far away from the expected output. And similarly, x minus b square punishes Bob if his defense is too far away from the expected output. So they prove that the maximum of these two quantity is guaranteed to be higher than c over square root of r times the potential function with input xi, ai, and bi. So we stress that there could exist other potential functions. It just happens to be the case that this, this potential function serves our purposes. So now we know that maximum of this quantity is lower bounded by this. We just need to prove that expectation of this c over square root of r times the potential function is greater than our, the, our goal. So note that the c over square root of r appears on both sides. So it is suffices to prove that the expectation of the potential function is greater than x times one minus x. So we complete the proof in the following way. So we first note that this potential function actually has, can be written in this another form, which is x plus x minus a minus b squared minus 2ab. So we, what we do is that we first write this potential function in this second form. Now we can use the linearity of the expectation to push the expectation onto each term individually. Now we note that x minus a minus b squared is a trivariate convex function. So we can apply Jensen's inequality and push the expectation inside each term. Now finally, we note that because Alice and Bob's view are independent, therefore expectation of ai times bi is exactly expectation of ai times expectation of bi. Therefore, we have this identity. Now note that this equation is exactly in the form of the second form. So now we can written it back as the potential function with input expectation of xi, expectation of ai, and expectation of bi. We want to st stress that although this phi function is not a trivariate convex function, we actually prove that the Jensen's inequality holds for this scenario. This is because we identify a global invariant, which is this, in the augmented protocol 
that ensures that Jensen's inequality holds. So now the proof falls from the following simple facts. Because the expectation of the expected output at each children node is exactly the expected output at the root, which is x. Now re recall that this potential function can be written as the first input x times 1 minus x plus two, the two square terms, which is non-negative. So this is greater than or equal to x times 1 minus x. And this completes the proof. So now to summarize, we have considered an R message coin tossing protocol in the random oracle model. We used the heavy query algorithm to kill the correlation between Alice and Bob's prior view. These steps ask polynomially many additional queries. We use an inductive approach with a carefully crafted potential function to identify a stocking time tau such that the score that we had Define, we have defined with, with respect to a stopping time is guaranteed to be high. Now this stopping time can be translated into an attack that will alter the expected output by the same bound. In particular, when this protocol output an uniform bit, this, uh, this deviation to the expected output is guaranteed to be one over square root of R. So I want to mention that in an ongoing work, we prove that the optimal fair coin tossing is also black box separated from public key encryption schemes. That is all for my talk. Thank you.